Jason Wilde and Bill Johnson here with you for a live video edition of Green and Gold today, or as I like to call it, Lambo Live, since we're in Lambo Field, and that was the original name of our show. Billy, you were in there for Josh Sitton on Tuesday, talking about how he feels about Thursday games. He's not a big fan. Nope. It was refreshing to hear him talk quite honestly, about the quality of the games and the quality of how his body feels. Well, and what a lot of fans and media have said about Thursday Night Football, Josh Sitton said it too. He said, it sucks. I'm not paraphrasing. He said, it sucks. He said he feels like crap. Uh, the preparation level isn't what they need it to be. Everything that we've feared about Thursday football and why it hasn't been great is what Josh Sitton said today. Well, and again, they love the weekend off that they get. This will be their second kind of mini bye week, but they have to play on a Thursday. They didn't have the 10, ga 10 days of preparation against Seattle. They only had a week after their last preseason game. Now they're playing Sunday, Thursday. The one thing I would ask, though, is they played really well on Sunday, at least offensively. In some ways, does this give them some measure of momentum that they can carry what happened Sunday into a Thursday game at home against the team with a rookie quarterback without Adrian Peterson, etc.? Well, Mike McCarthy feels that way. He said so in, in his press conference that he feels as though they can carry over that momentum. That's the positive momentum. The negative momentum for the Packers, they can't stop the run. And I don't think that in two days of actual practice or whatever they have, that it's enough to fix what was wrong against the Chicago run game. Right, and Mike McCarthy wouldn't really say what was wrong. Well, it's their fundamentals. Oh, it's a little bit of scheme. The Bears did things we weren't prepared for. Well, okay, how are you going to handle that against Minnesota? And and what's interesting, Billy, is that they don't have Adrian Peterson, obviously with the being on the exempt list because of his legal situation in Texas with the felony charge of child abuse. But their two running backs put up some serious numbers against Atlanta on Sunday. So this is not a joke running game that's coming in against what has been through four games a joke run defense, 176 yards a game. When it's a defensive-minded head coach, you know, whatever that says about the offensive coordinator, I don't know, but a defensive-minded head coach is a guy that's going to have an eye on time of possession and also going to have an eye on limited risk offensively, especially either with a gimpy rookie quarterback or a terrible former first-round draft pick at quarterback. So i got to believe that the, the Vikings are going to try to pound it down the Packers' throats until the Packers try to stop it. One other thing, Greg Jennings is coming back. He did the conference call with us. There'll be a story at ESPNWisconsin.com about it. When you look at the Packers' wide receiver situation, we talked about it on our show about Tom Brady and his situation. Aaron Rodgers, comparatively speaking, is pretty blessed. I think they would be helped tremendously if they had Greg Jennings mm -hmm. or uh, James Jones still on their team. But how different do you think this offense could be if Devontae Adams, who's a second-round pick, another big draft pick investment, Starts to pan out. He had a big catch on a touchdown that didn't count. He's starting to show signs of being another one of those second-round picks who turn out to be good players very early. But how much does their offense change if he's good? Well, let's be honest. I mean, looking at two weeks ago, it would make it a lot better. Looking at last week, how can they really get much better in the passing offense than they were against the Bears? I mean, it would obviously help if he would step forward, if we could see a little more out of Richard Rodgers. Who had a so. catch against the Bears, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, that would obviously make them that much better in the passing. And the other thing Sitton said today, we asked him about the importance of balance, and he said, well, last week it didn't matter at all. Now, is that going to be the same every week? We don't know. Um, just as an aside, Greg Jennings just can't help stepping on his tongue when he's talking to the Wisconsin media. I, I don't get it. And what did he say today? It's a better spiritual experience for him and his family in Minnesota than it is here in Green Bay. Well, and they've got better schools, he said. He's happy with the school his kids are in. And I do know that the school his kids were in here closed abruptly. Well, I had a, I had a, a couple of uh, preschoolers there, so ooh. I couldn't have afforded it long term like Greg Jennings. Right. But, but I... I think what was interesting to listen to him talk was that he does seem to be in somewhat of a happier place where I thought last year, and I used your term when I asked him about this with his heel turn as a wrestler, <laughs> but this is a guy that seemed unhappy. He seemed unhappy that the Packers didn't want him. He seemed like he was unhappy here, which probably wasn't really true. It sounds like he's in a better place now. He even admitted that he said a lot of things he shouldn't have said last year. So, I don't know. Is he going to get booed on Thursday night? I'm guessing pretty vociferously, but if Brett Favre can come back, anybody can come back eventually, right? Well, and I just, I can't believe, I mean, maybe he's happier in Minneapolis, in the Twin Cities, but I can't believe that he's happier with either Teddy Bridgewater or Christian Ponder throwing him the ball rather than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I think that would be a very difficult argument for him to make as well. That is our video edition of Lambo Live. I'm going to just keep calling it that. I don't care if the 
Packers. Yeah, uh, man. Stick it to the man. If their if their legal department gets on us, we will be back again. That Every angry, time you know who's coming. That yelling tour guide's gonna come get us. That guy that yells on the tours is gonna come. You stop calling it Lambo Live, little dude. Well, I'm here with Mr. Wednesday, who was actually here on a Tuesday. We'll talk to you next week.